Good afternoon, President Stenger, Interim Provost Malur, Dean Neiman, distinguished members of the faculty and administration, staff, parents, relatives, friends, and most importantly, the 2012 graduates of Binghamton University's Harper College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you for the warm welcome today, and thank you for the honor that you have bestowed upon me. My first order of business, however, is of course to congratulate the 2012 graduates. You should be extremely proud of your success here at Binghamton University and recognize, and I hope appreciate, that you have had the opportunity to study at one of the nation's premier universities on a campus that is now truly beautiful, and with a faculty that is highly regarded for excellence in both teaching and research. Congratulations. I also want to congratulate the faculty for teaching and inspiring the graduates of 2012 and the parents, other family members, and friends gathered here today. Congratulations to you as well. When I was told last December that I would receive an honorary degree and was asked to speak at your graduation ceremony, I was honored and I was humbled. I never dreamed when I graduated 39 years ago, so long ago, that I would ever have the opportunity to return to my alma mater and deliver a commencement address. To be recognized in this way by my, no, our university is, particularly with my family present, my wife Monica, my children Charlotte and Lily, my sister Naomi, her husband Steve, my college roommate has come back, Morris, it's probably the highest honor that I could ever hope to achieve. And for that, I say thank you to all of you. But my second reaction, once the honor and the humbleness sort of disappeared, was nervousness. Nervousness about the speech that I would deliver today. And frankly, it only got worse as the time grew shorter and this day of reckoning approached. And this is pretty strange because I'm a reasonably confident person. I was nervous about not being funny or witty enough. We all know that great graduation speeches are filled with jokes and stories. And I'm not a funny person and I'm not a storyteller. I was nervous about the fact that I wasn't a famous speaker. We all know that the most memorable graduation speeches, the ones that you'll remember 30 or 40 years from now, are made by celebrities. And I certainly not, am not a celebrity. I'm not famous at all. And most importantly, I was nervous about not being able to say something meaningful enough to you. But in this case, after I had a chance to think about it and had an opportunity to speak with your dean, Dean Neiman, about what might be useful and timely for me to talk about today, it became evident that sharing some of my experiences after college graduation as a liberal arts student could provide you with some benefit as you prepare for your professional lives ahead. And this is something that I can talk passionately about. So let's go ahead. The main topic I like to speak about is the study of the liberal arts, such as you have experienced at Harper College, and the role that it can play in preparing you for your future professional life. Let me say that when I was a college student and approaching graduation, I could have benefited from hearing some of the advice and observations that I hope I can pass on to you today because I personally had little idea of what awaited me and the potential that was really out there for career success. Frankly, at that point, I might have thought that I was worldly I guess that was only natural, but in retrospect, I was quite naive. I only knew about a few professional opportunities. I knew about teaching, I knew about medicine, I knew about law, I knew about little else. Except accounting, I knew about accounting. My father was an accountant, and the one thing I knew was it wasn't something I wanted to do, and I wanted to do something different. 
So for me at that time, the path I pursued was one I was familiar with, and it was to go to graduate school to study history, most specifically Latin American history. The good news, it was great, the good news was it was a choice to pursue a passion that I developed here at Binghamton when I studied under wonderful professors who I remember quite fondly over 40 years later for what they taught me, uh, such as Sidney Harkave, the Russian historian, Helen Rivlin, the Turkish historian, who I was really pleased to learn yesterday at the recognition ceremony, has a foundation award named after her. Charles Forsey and Melvin Dubofsky, American historians, and the Latin American historian, Alberto Lopez. I was pretty good at it. But the bad news, probably, was that I did it without the knowledge of the many alternatives that were possible for someone like me. And the point is, while there is nothing wrong with the student of the liberal arts going on to become a doctor, or a lawyer, or a teacher, or even getting a business degree to become an accountant, for example, what is important is that you recognize that there are many other possibilities and choices filled with enormous opportunities, and the next step for you is to find out what some of them are. In my case, I thought I'd become an academic, and truth be told, I loved being a graduate student where I studied at UCLA. But it didn't end with the teaching job I had hoped for when I first arrived. And while that should have become pretty obvious to me from the start, given the fact we were experiencing a very severe recession during the early 1970s, much like we have recently, and university jobs were being eliminated rather than increased, I wasn't going to let that heavy dose of reality get in the way of my dream, and I forged ahead. Over the next number of years, I studied and traveled for research and completed my degree, which I'm very proud of and thankful for. But over the course of those years, I also came to the realization that teaching and scholarly research on the university level was not the only thing I might be interested in as a career. In fact, as I opened my eyes to the other possibilities, I realized that I could be interested in and pretty well suited for many other careers. The challenge then was to turn the skills that I had developed in my academic training at Binghamton and UCLA to a new passion in a new career. To me, something of an optimist, this wasn't a problem or a defeat, it was an opportunity. It was a little scary, but it was an opportunity. And I hope that all of you, as you move forward from being a student of the liberal arts as an opportunity to do something new and exciting in the next phase of your life, or that you see your move as a student from the liberal arts uh, as an opportunity to do something new and exciting in the next phase of your life, one that will be enhanced by the training you have received in your four years here. As an individual who's followed a relatively unorthodox path from student of Latin American history, and that PhD that I earned probably complicated things in the business world far, to a far greater extent than you will experience with a BA or a BS in the liberal arts, to a reasonably successful career in business, the place for liberal arts graduates in the workplace is something I've given a lot of thought to. I've also spoken many times with academics at Binghamton, UCLA, and other universities on how to help liberal arts graduates make their way professionally in other fields. I've discussed with and proselytized to business people and other potential employers about the virtues of hiring liberal arts graduates for jobs and careers that are often thought as suitable only for those with technical or professional training. Honestly, your degree in the liberal arts may have made or may make your first job search or career decision more difficult than it would if you had a degree in a field such as engineering, nursing, or finance. But I can assure you with the proper amount of drive and creativity, and maybe even a little luck, that something that we could all use from time to time, you will succeed with your first career step. And although I can't guarantee it will be your dream job, I implore you to, re to persevere and search for the right opportunity if you haven't already found it, using all the resources you can muster. Ask everyone you know what they do and what the details of their days are like. Think creatively about links between the classes that you have taken and potential job or career opportunities. Volunteer or take an internship if it gets your foot in the door that you think is promising. Look for companies or organizations that seek to hire raw talent, emphasize training, 
and educate their new recruits. Banks, for example, historically did that, and that's the way that I got my start in financial services and investment management. Seek out others in fields or careers that you find interesting who have similar liberal arts degrees and implore them to help you learn about their job and help you get your start. Network, network, network. Be curious, upbeat, and persistent. And after a few short years of experience, your educational background as a student of the liberal arts will only be one of those things in the job interview that you will discuss with the interviewer who will want to know how you managed to be so successful in your chosen field without the MBA or BS in accounting or MPH that he or she had. At that point, the relevant items that lead to advancement and success in your chosen field are your personal track record, your imagination, creativity, and drive and passion. But the training that you had in the liberal arts the way you learned to do research, analyze material, to work together in teams, come to conclusions, make judgments, make presentations, and sell ideas will stay with you for your entire life and help make you a more valuable asset in your profession and your community. As the leader of a company whose employees are constantly making difficult decisions, and in our case, their real estate investment decisions, the qualities that I value in them most include the ability to ask the right questions, intellectual curiosity, and healthy skepticism. I want them to figure out what is important versus what is marginal, and to support their conclusions with good analysis and analytics. These are the hallmarks of a liberal arts education, and they are qualities that in underpin success in all careers. And that's nothing to say about how much your study in the liberal arts will help make you an interesting and well-rounded person, and perhaps more so than many other students that followed a narrower professional path from the beginning of college. So I believe that you have excellent training for future success. A liberal arts degree is certainly not the only path to professional success and may not be the clearest or the easiest path, but you certainly should not look at it as an obstacle that cannot be overcome. And you should definitely concentrate on turning it into an advantage, which I am sure that you can. The last thing that I want to say is that I'm sure that some, if not many of you, are concerned about today's continually difficult job market and how that will affect you, at least in the short term. Now I, of course, as a former history major and history student, will implore you to at least try to resist that temptation and think about the longer term. But I know that is easier said than done. At least one must recognize that this year is better than a couple of years ago when the economy seemed to be in free fall and was losing over 600,000 jobs a, year, a month. And people were truly worried about the very survival of our economic system. So take heart. Things will continue to get better. They already have. And try to remember this recent recession may be the first recession that you will experience as an adult, but it will not be the last. And if you work hard, are creative about your search, persevere, and think outside the box, you will succeed in your next step in your career path. To end. Congratulations on your fine achievement. Rejoice in the day. Relish the fact that you are a student of the liberal arts who understands change, maintains historical perspective, and looks at the world with a healthy sense of skepticism, balanced, of course, with some optimism. And as a student of the liberal arts, you've learned that literature, history, the sciences, and art help us to understand what life means what is enduring, and what is peripheral, and how to be a good citizen. You can also write well, enjoy the arts, read a serious novel, and try to understand recent political developments. Celebrate. But remember, your graduation, as celebrated in this commencement ceremony, and I stress the word commencement, is not an end, but it's the beginning of the next phase of your life. Embrace the challenge. 
Try to find a field or a job that you really enjoy. I feel that way about my job and my career, and I know that it is a, very, it is a key to success. Be confident. You have had great training for life. And last, try to appreciate the wonderful and valuable experiences that you have had here at Binghamton University. It took me more than 20 years after graduating before I returned to this school and started to establish or reestablish my relationship as an alumnus. I regret that it took me so long to do this, so I would hope that you won't follow that path and, as Heidi suggested, do it right away. But instead, you will continue to stay connected and do everything you can in the years ahead to help others gain access to the excellent educational opportunities that this fine university has provided to you. I wish you good luck and much success and happiness, and thank you for listening. <laughs>